Well, there are a couple connections. Number one, I mean, this is pretty elementary. All of our environmental issues are caused because of what we do to the environment. No other species out there is pushing on the environment in a way that is stressing it out because it's, it's habitat. We started doing that because, as Malcolm said, for 200,000 years of the history of Homo sapiens, uh, our population stayed pretty much constant because people were dying as fast as they were being born, like happens to any other species. But then we started to, over, we started to repeal some of natural law, starting around 1796 when we uh, we de defeated smallpox. A vaccine for smallpox was followed by all these other medical advances, other vaccines, pasteurization of milk, uh, and suddenly we had people living longer and many fewer babies dying. And then we got into the 20th century and then we did something that far more accelerated because we hit one billion around 1815 and then one and a, a little over one and a half billion in 1900. But then we did something that changed everything enormously by learning how to pull nitrogen out of the air and chemically slather it on the soil and create much more plant life than nature had ever created before. Uh, that translated into a whole lot more food. Famines didn't occur. The Green Revolution with improved crops that produce much more food per stock added to that. And as famines were avoided, more people survived to beget more people, and suddenly we quadrupled. Now, the two aspects of climate change is, number one, there are many more of us demanding something else that happened right along those same 200 years, and that was our mastery of concentrated energy. Basically, we took a lot of energy that, in the form of carbon that nature didn't need, so it had buried away. We dug it up millions of years of worth of buried stuff, and we've been burning it for the last 200, 250. And we've jet-propelled society. We can do all these incredible things. We have electricity, but we also have these waste products, and they float up into the atmosphere. And the more of us demanding this stuff, the more carbon dioxide is up there. There's more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere right now than there has been in three million years. And the last time there was this much in the atmosphere, the seas were 80 to 100 feet higher than they are today. That also occurred 15 million years ago, same sea levels. This is what we are doing. Second, as those temperatures go up, they are going to affect the amount of food that we can control. Just as our population rose with our food growing capacity, the rising temperature as a result of all that carbon dioxide, this is no secret to anyone in this room, is starting to play havoc with the weather and we all know that we are headed to probably beyond a two degree centigrade average temperature in by the middle of this century. Now, agricultural literature is filled with studies, and a lot of them are cited in my bibliography and countdown, that show that for every one degree centigrade, crop yields are going to go down about 10%. And we're already headed beyond two degrees. And in that same time, by the middle of the century, we're scheduled to add about two and a half billion more people. Folks, this doesn't compute. 